This laptop might be one of the best values in its class and I've been using this off and on for about a month now. And since this is my first laptop that I've used with the Snapdragon X Elite chipset, I wanted to take it slow. And I've seen it on sale in a couple of places, so I think this is the perfect time. So I partnered with ASUS to share with you my experience since I've taken this laptop across the world. And now that I'm back, let's talk about the new ASUS VivoBook S15. So let's start with the laptop itself. I appreciate the clean and simple design. It is what we're familiar with when it comes to the VivoBook series. But the thing that stood out to me is just how light and thin this laptop is. For a laptop with a 15.6 inch OLED display, the lightweight materials really make a difference if you travel a lot. It is a tad over three pounds, so it fits perfectly into a backpack, and I loved using this on my summer trip to Japan. This laptop also has plenty of ports, including a full-size HDMI port, two USB-C 4 ports, a micro SD card slot, and a combo audio jack, and on the other side, two USB-A 3.2 ports. The keyboard does manage to fit a number row there on the right side, which is impressive. It is backlit, but it is single zone RGB, which is a little odd. I just kept it clean with white, but if you wanted to match a vibe, you definitely could. The keyboard itself feels pretty good. It's a little softer than I like my keyboards, but it has plenty of travel and tactility, so it's very comfortable to type on. And the trackpad is standard size and it works great. It is not a haptic trackpad, but it has a decent click to it when you push it. When it comes to the hardware though, I think the star of the show is the 15.6 inch OLED display. It is a bright and crisp 3K 120Hz display and it's color accurate as well. And in this price point, this is probably the best display that you're going to get, so you're not going to be disappointed. This is not a two-in-one, but it can lay all the way flat if you have a use for that. The only downside is that it's not a touchscreen display, but I think it's a good sacrifice to keep the price affordable. For me, they make up for it by including a Windows Hello compatible camera array up at the top. This is the best way to authenticate in my opinion. It's so fast and easy. Also, you get this physical privacy slider so you can just cut off access to the camera anytime you want for security. Me and my family visited Japan for three weeks this summer and it was an incredible experience. It is definitely our favorite place to visit and we can't wait to go again. And when we first got there, we spent hours just narrowing down where we're going to visit and the display was nice and bright outside. And you can really feel that 120 hertz display. It was so smooth scrolling through a ton of travel websites. Watching content is also a good experience on this. And let me tell you, these speakers are loud. So going up to 100%, you'll see how loud they are. The higher you go past 75%, the more tinny that it gets and I would like a little bit more when it comes to the base side of things. But you do have a custom EQ available to you with Dolby Atmos so you can customize it to your liking. The trackpad does have a neat trick though. With ASUS software, you can control the volume quickly just by swiping up or down from the left edge side of the trackpad. And I found this to be super handy. And if you use the right side, it controls the brightness of the display. So I'm digging the gesture controls. We will get to the performance of the Snapdragon X Elite processor that is powering this laptop in a little bit. But the thing that changes the user experience is the battery life. This laptop is rated up to 18 hours of battery life on a single charge and that is insane. So this is a game changer for Windows laptops. On my personal usage, I wasn't quite hitting that target, but I was getting between 12 to 13 hours of real world usage on a single charge. So that's still incredible. It just definitely depends on what you're doing with it. What you will absolutely notice is the standby time. I would close the laptop at night and wake up the next morning with almost the same battery life and Windows users know just how much of a game changer that is. And that also contributes to charging this laptop less. So you might go days and days without charging it. So this is a very efficient chipset. Okay, so let's talk about the performance of this new Qualcomm Snapdragon X Elite processor. And the one found in the VivoBook S15 is a 12 core variant. Now this is not the highest clock model that Qualcomm offers, but this does run at 45 watts. So you're gonna get some solid performance out of this laptop. If you're into benchmarks, this is what the Geekbench scores are like, and it does very well on multi-core and solid on single core. So that's why the laptop feels so snappy. Here is the Cinebench R24 score on single core and multi-core. So let me know what you think about that. This is definitely a very capable and speedy chipset competing well with the M series chips from Apple. Another huge feature is the power you get unplugged. Do you remember that benchmark score that I showed you? That was plugged in, but here's the benchmark score without it being plugged in. This is so close. You're almost getting full power with no plug. So this is huge. This also applies to the built-in GPU as well. This is the benchmark with it plugged in, and then this is the benchmark with it unplugged. So the performance is extremely close. 
There's also an NPU built in that is capable of 45 top, so this is AI ready. There's a dedicated Copilot key on the keyboard, so this is a Copilot Plus PC, so I'm just starting to use this. I'm not going to act like I use a ton of AI tools because I don't, but I had to try some image generation and it worked really well. But I'm not sure how much of this is actually being done on the MPU right now. I did try out some video editing on DaVinci Resolve Beta and it works really well. This is supposed to leverage the MPU quite heavily for masking and other features, so I need to learn this more. The scrubbing is really smooth, so I can't wait to learn it because I'm a Final Cut Pro user, so I do my editing on a MacBook. So I want to get good at DaVinci Resolve so I can edit fully on a PC as well, so wish me luck. As of right now, I don't think there are clear examples of everyday advantages of the NPU with applications, but as time goes on, it will be more important, so this laptop is ready for that moment. What's great is with everyday computing, you almost never hear the fans. This is a very quiet laptop. When you want to push it, you can hear the fans and it gets warm before the fans kick on, but you can change the profile of the fans to fit your needs. And even under full load, the laptop stayed properly cooled and never got too hot to be on my lap. The ventilation is adequate on the laptop in the back and on the bottom as well. As of right now, I think there's only one spec available, but I think more variants will be available later with more RAM. Just know that if you want to upgrade the RAM, you're going to have to buy that because the RAM is soldered on, but you can get to the SSD. Okay, so let's end it with gaming, and while Snapdragon X Elite uses integrated graphics, you will be able to do some gaming for sure because this is what has improved over the last month. I have the updated graphics driver, and it is so much better. A lot of these titles weren't even playable a couple of weeks ago, but they're now playable in 1080p, which is very impressive for an integrated GPU. And Street Fighter 6 was one of them, and this is with the settings dialed down, and the frame rate is not super ideal in this resolution, but it is 100% playable in 1080p. And if you just drop it down one notch, or if you just put it in 720p, it is quick and fluid and responsive. So Street Fighter 6 on the go is possible because this is gameplay unplugged. Yes, so you can easily do this on a plane or while traveling in the car. Doom Eternal was also unplayable last time without this update, and surprisingly again, I can run this on low settings but on 1080p resolution, so I'm impressed that it's hovering in the 40s and 50s for FPS. Again, this is gaming unplugged, and I did try it plugged in, and I was getting only a few FPS more, so that goes to show you the efficiency that you're going to get with this chipset. I was able to play Shadow of the Tomb Raider while I was in Tokyo, but it was in 720p and everything was dialed down to the lowest possible setting just to get it to run. But now I'm actually in 1080p again and I'm able to play, so the GPU drivers are getting better. Now there are still games that are not compatible, so I hope more games get added to the list soon for better performance. But this is a very positive thing for gaming on Snapdragon X Elite laptops, so casual gaming is a go on the Asus VivoBook S15. So that is my experience with the laptop so far, so if you're interested, I'm going to leave a few links down below for you to make it easy to check out more information on it. I think the ASUS website shows it starting at $1099, but the laptop that I have right now is MSRP at $1299, but I'm already seeing it for $100 off, so I'll definitely leave those links down below for you as well. Overall, this laptop is giving you good battery life, great performance, an excellent display, plenty of ports, and a light and thin design. I think this makes it a great choice for your next laptop. Thumbs up if you enjoyed this, subscribe for a lot more tech videos and laptop videos as well, and I'll see you guys in the next one.